Uh, this is Conrad Hutchinson, and I don't have to say the third over here in California, but I used to have to say the third in, down in Louisiana. The band director who introduced Halftime Flair in the South was Grambling's Conrad Hutchinson. He was from a Tuskegee family of musicians, and in the service he had found himself performing with military bands. But when Conrad arrived at Grambling in 1952, he was ready to shatter the way most fans watched halftime. He introduced uh, dance steps to go with the music, and they played the popular tunes, so they appealed to the public. Our band is playing and moving and dancing all at the same time. The only problem we have with the band is making certain that they don't go over the halftime allotment so that we don't get penalized. This man has often been imitated, but never, never adequately duplicated. The famous, nationally renowned Grambling State University Tiger Marching Band. Well, this is what it's all about. This young man was a student of mine in the Inglewood High School Band. He got a band scholarship. He went to the University of Arkansas in Pine Bluff. He graduated from the University of Pine Bluff with a major in music. And he's now back in California, Los Angeles, getting his teaching certificate. And he'll be ready to teach bands shortly. Uh, and in Los Angeles, in the inner cities, there aren't any bands. Inglewood High School is one of the very few, along with Crenshaw High, Los Angeles High School. Ladies and gentlemen, that's it. That's pretty sad for a big city. And when you go to the South, or to the Midwest, or to the Northeast, or to the North, uh, small towns, big cities have bands. But these kids are not experiencing that in California. Something is wrong with that picture. And we're right here where the recording industry is. Right here. All these kids got to do is go across the hill to Hollywood. Whereas people from all over the world come here and they have no place to live. They, they have to rent. They have to work other jobs. And if they don't make it in the recording industry, they have to hop that horn, palm it, to get back home. These kids are right here. But they're not getting the type of music education they should be getting. beginning band classes and I'm able to get kids ready in one year if not two but basically one year to come into the band and keep up and uh, they do a pretty good job. This is our marching tempo also see so we got to make sure yesterday it was dragging just a little bit. Okay that's not a bad sound keep working on it. Now you know we didn't sound like that last week did we? But you see constant practice Constant practice, long tones, warming up. The style that I do, that I teach the band, is the show style. The show style comes to us from the Big Ten schools. It's nothing but the old Big Ten style. University of Michigan, Michigan State University, Ohio State University, um, um, Iowa, Illinois, University of Illinois. These, all these schools back in the 60s used to do that style. Michigan still does it. Now watch. Boom. You see, you're strutting. One. You're strutting. What are you doing?
brought to the south by guys like my band like my father and uh, they had to go north to get their masters their advanced degrees because your predominantly black schools in back in the 60s and the 40s 50s did not have the master programs and the doctoral programs so they went north and brought the and was very impressed with the style <clears throat> that they were doing and they brought the style back south and just Put some seasoning to it. Uh, it's, uh, it. You're able to really do. In other words, every step is not programmed. Every, every and kids get a chance to interject into the show. Uh, their dance steps, because as you know, each generation dance different. So I let the kids do their, put some of their dance steps in. Computer game. You can't move. Let's play. You had a chicken. You had a chicken. You had a chicken. I shouldn't have to tell anybody out here that the hills are together on a chicken. And to keep still. Don't look at me. Yeah, I know if somebody didn't just give a hand signal over there. Had a chicken. All right. Break down. We're playing. In the meantime, I turn around and give them some dance steps, and they have a hard time learning my dance steps. So it's a give and take situation. The music, the music is from uh, the top 40. It's the music that they recognize, and they it turns the kids on. It turns the football team on, and so we have a pumped up crowd there helping to win the football game, and the band is pumped up. So. Uh, that's what we do. The, the, the walking style is your military style. The Big Ten style is the high knee lift. We pick the leg up on each step and the heel comes to the knee. And so it's more of a flashy style. And that's what I do. Come on, buddy. Come on, buddy.
They're dangerous, y'all. When you teach music, you don't teach uh, just marching band. Band marching band is a result of teaching music. Music is based. Our music in this country was brought here by the pilgrims. In other words, it's from it's the European style, and so that includes classical music. Well, that's what I teach: classical music. But you can take classical music and apply it, change the flavoring and everything, and all of a sudden you got jazz. You you can take it and teach marches or popular music and have the band start marching to it. Now you got a marching band. So every student must, when they read music, they must read the music, they must execute the music, and they must be able to play it on their horn. And one of the strongest uh, things to do for a student and to make them strong and more confident is to have them play classical solos. If you can play a solo, no matter if it's classical or whatever, you're building confidence, you're building self-esteem. And I'm just giving to them what I was exposed to. Uh, by the time I had finished high school, uh, I had traveled to more than four states in classical piano competitions, uh, winning, winning re local, regional, state, and I didn't win a national because I was having too much fun in Atlanta, Georgia. Can I get the uh, uh, meal ticket story from you? The meal ticket story. Um, I was a student, a senior, and head drill sergeant, and over the dance committee at the Grambling State University band. And the band director, who I couldn't say dad back in those days in front of the band, I had to say dad uh, uh, after band practice was over. But... Uh, I raised, no, no, yes. So one morning, I, I, I didn't go to sleep that night. And so one morning, I, uh, well, I hear drums. 
and I had been up late studying, but I hear drums. And when I heard those drums, I knew I was late to band practice. That's a no-no. That is a pure no-no. So I hurried up, got dressed, and when I ran out the door, I'm facing the whole band marching towards me to go to the football field, which was right around the corner. And I could not fall into the formation. Those of us that were late, we first we had to run the stadium steps all the way up and down. And then when uh, we were allowed to fall in, uh, and then after practice, no, and then he said, everybody come see me after practice is over. So after practice was over, I walked into his office, and I said, uh, Dad, I'm sorry. He, says, he looks at me, he says, don't call me Dad. Let me have your meal book. Well, I was living on the campus because I didn't want to live at home. And I got a chance to eat in the dormitory. In other words, I got a chance to be a regular student. He took my meal book. He closed his eyes. And he went, Shh, gave it back to me. He says, now don't come to my house to eat. 